Good morning. I was hoping that we wouldn't be doing these type of uh, sermons anymore. I'd hope COVID had passed, but with uh, the numbers on the rise, uh, we're going to be cautious and just shut things down for a couple of weeks. Lord willing, we will resume services as normal on September the 5th, so be prayerful for that. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if there's anything I can do for you, please give me a call and I will uh, do whatever I can. Uh, I'm going to be praying for you guys and hope that everybody is doing good in this time. Just wanted to share a few words from Scripture with you today uh, about Jesus and really something that Jesus did a lot in his ministry and something that you and I probably have on our mind and have prayed for a lot in the last year for folks uh, with COVID or other sicknesses, and that is healing. We see Jesus doing a lot of healing in his ministry and that's what we're going to talk about this morning in Matthew chapter 4 at the beginning of Jesus's ministry we have kind of a preview here in Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 of what Jesus's ministry would be like in his three years or so that he was ministering now Jesus had just come out of a time of temptation and and really getting ready to start his ministry. And as he began to preach and teach, and as he began to heal, uh, people really began to flock to Jesus. That is uh, certainly something that people are looking for. We are looking for a powerful truth. We are looking for healing. We are looking for deliverance. We are looking for answers. That's true for everybody in our world. And when Jesus came onto the scene, he was answering people's questions and telling them things that that no one had ever done before. He was healing people and delivering people in a way that no one has ever done and no one ever can. Only Jesus can do that. And that's what people are still looking for today. And 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 we, when we get into God's word, hopefully we are seeking Jesus. We are we are seeking this Savior who we know can heal us, who we know can deliver us, who we know is there for us, that we know died for us. And this is a message that if we have heard it, we want others to hear it. And we want to continue to hear it and to continue to draw strength from it. So let's pray and then we will look at a few texts. Father God, we come to you today and I thank you for a good day. And I pray that you just be with all of our folks and our community and our world, dear Lord, is so many have the virus and, and various other sicknesses, dear Lord. There's lots of sickness and cancer, and God, I just pray that you be with us, and I pray that you just watch over our church family and give us a good day in these words and help us to trust Jesus. And I just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 and 24 says, Jesus was going all over Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Then the news about him spread throughout Syria. So they brought to him all those who were afflicted, those suffering from various diseases and intense pain, the demon-possessed, the epileptics, and the paralytics, and he healed them. So here we see Jesus' ministry in a nutshell. Jesus was going about and he was preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God. He wanted people to enter into the kingdom of God. And here, as people begin to hear what Jesus is doing and see what Jesus is doing, they begin to bring their sick to Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning is bringing our sick to Jesus. Now, one way that we do that is we lift them up in prayer. That is important for us to do. For those who are sick, who are suffering, who are going through hardships, we need to be faithful to lift them up in prayer because I will tell you that prayer works. I, so many times I, I'm, I'm fearful that you know people are sick or going through something and we pray for them and they get better and, and, and we don't give God the credit for that. We don't give God the glory and say, the reason why their situation changed, the reason why they were healed is because God healed them, because God answered our prayers. And God answers more prayers probably than we realize. He may not always answer them in the way that we desire, but I believe God answers a lot of prayers. And I believe that a lot of healing comes from the Lord. Now, 
no doubt he gives us doctors and nurses, and we praise God for that, but, but God does the healing through them, and sometimes God just does the healing on his own. Even if we're seeing those doctors and nurses that God gives us, it is God who does the healing, and we need to praise God when we are healed, when others are healed. When we pray for people, we need to know that God hears those prayers, and sometimes God heals those people, and sometimes God doesn't. God doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we think he should, but he always answers them in the right way because God is right in all he does. And we need to be faithful when those that we have around us who are sick, that we lift them up to the Lord, that we bring them to Jesus Christ. A good example of this in Scripture of friends who are bringing someone to Jesus who is sick is found in Mark chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. Mark chapter 2, verses 2 through 5, it says, So many people gathered together that there was no more room, not even in the doorway. And he was speaking the message to them. Now, a little backstory here. Jesus was at a house, and there were lots of people who were coming to Jesus. That was often the case in Jesus' ministry. So many people there, you couldn't even get close to the house. It was it was packed. It was, it was, everybody was there wanting to hear what Jesus was teaching. Let's continue on in verse 3. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic carried by four men. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above where he was. And when he had spoken, excuse me, and when he had broken through, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, this is a beautiful story in many ways. One, we see just the greatness of Jesus and the crowds that he attracts and how wonderful his preaching and teaching must have been. Two, here is a man who was a paralytic who could not have gone to Jesus on his own, but yet his friends bring him to Jesus. His friends hear about Jesus and who he is and the greatness of Jesus. And the friends say, you know what? Our friend is sick, but we know a man who can heal him. And so they make their way to Jesus, but due to the crowds around the house, they're unable to get to Jesus. And so they begin to move, remove the roof of the house and lower this man through. Now, what a good example of what it means to be a friend. Perhaps there are folks that we know who are sick. And it's important for us, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we take care of folks when we can, that we help them out when we can. Uh, maybe there will come an occasion where we have to remove a roof to get somebody help, but even if it doesn't come to that in our life, there are plenty of situations that we can help people out. Perhaps we can give them a ride to the doctor or bring them some medicine from the pharmacy or bring them groceries or whatever it may be. When people are sick, they often need the help of others. And it's important for us to be friends like these friends in this story were and help those people out who have a need. We can help them out in a physical way in the ways I just mentioned. But in this story, the, the men were lifting their friend down to Jesus. But for us, we need to lift others up. We need to lift them up in prayer. We need to pray that God would bring healing to their body. We need to remember that. when Maybe there's a, a moment that, that pops into your mind in the day where you think about somebody. Well, when you think about somebody, that's the best time to pray for them. Sometimes people will say, well, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Well, I don't want your thoughts. I want your prayers. And so when you think about somebody, pray for them. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It can be long or short, whatever's on your heart. But lift them up in prayer. Pray that God would encourage them. Pray that God would heal them. Pray that God would comfort them. Pray that God would take care of them because it is not fun being sick for a day or for a month or for a year. And there are many sicknesses we see in this world. And we pray for healing and we pray for comfort and we pray for all of these things, and sometimes God brings the healing in this world, but sometimes the way that God heals people is by taking them out of this world, and that's a, a tough one for us because we love people and we don't want to see uh, you know, our loved ones suffer. We, we want to keep them with us, but man, what a, what a glorious day it is when God takes his children home 
And so when we pray for healing, we must realize that sometimes God heals in ways that we don't understand. But that's what we're really all looking for. Whether we have a physical illness or not, we are all looking for healing. Our world is looking for healing. Our country is looking for healing. And we must pray that God would bring healing to our body because the only healing that we can have is through Jesus Christ. He's sometimes, sure, he heals our bodies. Praise the Lord for that. But what he really wants to do is he wants to heal your soul. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to take away the, the punishment of your sins that lead to an eternal death and separation from him in a lake of fire. But we are sick with sin, but God wants to deliver us from that. He wants to heal us. Jesus is our great physician. And so let us pray for healing of those that we know that are sick, coronavirus or cancer or whatever other sickness it may be. Let us help them when we can and lift them up always in prayer. But let us pray for the souls of those we love that may be lost. Let us pray for ourselves. Perhaps there are things in our life that need to be healed, old oh, wounds that need to be healed, sins that need to be forgiven, or people that we ourselves need to forgive. Ask God to bring healing in the life of those around you but also in your life. Physically and spiritually, Jesus is the great healer. And when we pray, there is power in that prayer. James 5, 16 says, Look, the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. When we come to God and trust Him and seek Him, God is good, God hears us, and God will bring perfect healing. Maybe not always in the way we expect, maybe not always in the way we desire, but God will bring healing to our bodies and to our souls if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you and we thank you for these good words. And I pray that you just bless them. I pray that we'd seek you, dear Lord. I pray that we would be like those crowds that just long to hear the words of Jesus and long to hear these words of Scripture and long to seek Jesus for forgiveness and healing, dear Lord, through his death and on the cross and resurrection. God, I pray that you would help us to be faithful friends and family members to those we know that may be sick and suffering. Let us help them when we can and the ways we can. And God, let us lift them up in prayer. God, we know prayer is a powerful thing. And we thank you that we can communicate with you. And we thank you that, we, that you hear us. And I pray, God, that we would trust you. And I pray, God, that you would just bring healing to our land, bring healing to our family and friends, whatever they may be going through, God, if it be your will. And I pray that you just would be with our church, keep us safe, keep us healthy, and help us to get back together soon. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.